Hello everyone, welcome back to another tip of the month. Today we're going to see how to model an underground mine for the cut and fill method. So what I have here is essentially a small ore body and uh, this ore body is uh, cut into uh, eight sections here. So as we can see, this is uh, these are our sections that were cut through our ore body. And we're going to be using these sections to essentially determine where our level drifts will be. So we're going to start off with a parametric ramp that will go all the way to the bottom level here. And then right off the ramp, we're going to have different levels here. So we're going to see how to do that using uh, Promine's engineering category from the drift design module. So first thing is that uh, what I would like to do first is to determine where to start the ramp. And that is determined, of course, by several factors. In this case, we're going to assume um, a safety factor of a certain distance. So I will turn off these uh, levels here and I'll remain only with the uh, top one here. So I'll select this, type in the command line offset and I'll do the through method and I'll offset it, let's say by uh, 80 meters so that my ramp will be uh, this much distance away. And the reason why we want to make sure that it's uh, a little bit further than usual is because using the cut and fill method, we're going to have several uh, sub levels on top of each other when we come to the ore body section here. And when we reach the uh, top sub level in our small uh, section here, we're going to have uh, a, a slope that goes all the way to the uh, to the top here. So let's say uh, in this case, we have each level is separated by 25. So we go from 1775 down to 1750 down to 1725, which means that uh, if every level is five meters high, when we when we reach the last sub level on the top, it's 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 going to be 25 meters of vertical distance and to reach the top there, you need uh, some, uh, you know, good horizontal distance uh, to reach that. We're going to see this in action. So don't worry if uh, this is not clear at the moment. But for now, we know that this is the offset from my or uh, from our ore body here. And this is where we will start our parametric ramp. So once we have that, uh, we're going to head to the drift design module in engineering one. And in this list here, we're going to select parametric ramp. We're going to start the ramp, let's say here, just outside the offset. And we're going to select a direction like that. The start elevation will be 1775. Uh, curve radius will be 15. Uh, segment slope is five. Curve slope is zero. My final elevation at the bottom there will be 1625. So this is where my last level will stop. My number of levels here is eight and the dist elevation between levels will be 25 as such. So actually we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're actually, it's not eight levels. It should be six as such. So it stops exactly at 1625 with six levels going clockwise. So hit OK and this will be created as such. So as we can see now, this is what the ramp looks like. It's on a different layer now. We're going to change it in a second, but we can delete this offset now. And if we turn on the ore body, this is where the ramp is from our ore body. We're going to be focusing on the design uh, at the ore body level. And uh, after this, after designing the mine here, you can uh, essentially create another ramp that goes to the surface. So this is what the parametric ramp looks like. What we're going to do first is move this ramp to another layer. So we're going to create another layer basically called ramp and maybe just change the color. We can do it the same color as the ore body. So control one for properties and we're going to change that to be on ramp. There we go. So turn off the ore body layer and remain only with the section. So now we have the ramp and our section here uh, uh, shown. And then we're going to create essentially our sub levels that will go from 1775. So to do that, 
uh, we're gonna uh, click on a new layer and basically create 1775, for example, sub one, and just to identify, you know, uh, the different sub levels that will be. So we're gonna create essentially five of these, three and four and five. Let's color code each one of these just to make sure that we can correctly identify them when we have them in the drawing. And like that. So now that we have the sub level layers, what we're going to do is essentially draw first our uh, the drift that will go from the ramp to the ore body and then we're going to design the drifts inside the ore body afterwards. But first thing is that we want to determine the correct design that will go from the ramp to the ore body. Now, to uh, draw the first drift, we're basically going to click on draw center line. And we're going to go from the ramp, so the midpoint here. And we're going to select other. This one will be 1775 sub 1. So we're going to name it the same as the layer. The start elevation will be 1775. So this is where the ramp is. And the start slope, first one will be 0. Right, so we have a we want a flat drift that goes all the way to the ore body, and then we're going to add vertical distances afterwards. Hit OK, then go draw our ramp, uh, drift all the way to the outer point of the ore body here. So something like this, like that, and make sure that this is on the correct layer by going into the properties like this. Perfect. So uh, if we click on edit elevations and click on the center line, we're going to notice that th there's a length here. So this one is 75.473 to make things simpler and to calculate, uh, you know, the distances and the slopes after for, for afterwards, we're going to change that to 75 just to make things simpler. And we want to make sure that all the other drifts also stop at that same point. So what we're going to do is actually add a point by typing the, by typing in the command line point and selecting basically here and then uh, select and then type in the command line DDB, DDP type. And just to identify that point, we're going to mark it with an X like that and just maybe uh, put that uh, on the same layer as the ore body. Yeah, that's fine. Or the ramp. That's good. So um, the next drift will essentially go. So if we look here, we have this first drift that goes from here all the way here flat. The next one will have a vertical distance of five, right? So it, it'll go from here and it'll be at a five meter distance above. That means that our drifts here will be five meters high, correct? So to calculate the percent slope that we need, we're going to have a look at this screenshot here. So if this is our horizontal distance and this is our vertical distance, then our percent slope is equal to vertical divided by horizontal multiplied by 100. And this will allow us to calculate the uh, horizontal, uh, the, the percent slope for our uh, design here. So we have five levels. So we're going to go from one to five. Our horizontal distance, as I explained, uh, if we go back here, we can cl click on edit elevations, click on this, it's 75. So this stays constant. Uh, we don't need this. Our vertical distance now will be 5, 10, 15, and they have increments of 5. So our percent slope well, I can redo this formula, will be vertical divided by horizontal multiplied by 100. Well, actually, uh, just to clarify here first, we, we need six, uh, well, uh, this will be, the first one is zero actually, not five. So it goes by increments of five starting at zero. So just a little correction there. 
my percent slope, well, it'll remain the same, of course, vertical distance divided by horizontal distance multiplied by 100, and the same for the other ones. And we're, to simplify this, we can decrease the percent. So there we go. So now the next sublevel, sublevel two, will be 6.7. So this here will be 6.7 in order to reach a vertical distance of five. So let's have a look back here. Go to plan view. Always remember that when working with uh, drift design, you always need to be on plan view. Draw a center line, go from here. So this one will be sub two, 1775. The start slope now will be 6.7, like that. And go all the way to my point, which is located here. There we go. So sub level, so this is actually my second one here. Well, we can uh, adjust the layers later, but just to uh, show you what it looks like, this is what we have here. Our one, and then the second one goes there. And we're gonna repeat the same procedure for the three other sub levels. Draw center line, go from here. This one will be three. Now the next one is 13.3. So it will go 13.3 all the way to my point like that. Well, there's a little, uh, we can just redo that part because it's not accurate. Draw center line, go from here. like that and enter. And then four is 20. So that's a 20% slope. This one will be four. And finally, five is 26.7. all the way to here, and there we go. So now if you rotate this, this is what we have here. You see, you have the initial drift followed by more drifts at a five meter distance. And this is what we wanna achieve here because as I explained, if we look at the ore body here, we can now see that we start here, right? This is our first level, and then it goes all the way to the top. So this is the overcut hand, uh, cut and fill method. The same thing will be for this uh, level here, which is level uh, 1750, all the way to the bottom, like that. So now uh, just to make things a little bit more organized, we're gonna place each, well, for, now we can erase this point. We don't, we don't need it anymore. Uh, this one will be on sub two, this one will be on sub three, sub four, and five. So now that we have our different initial sublevel drifts, we can start designing our main drifts inside the ore body. So first, we will start with the first sublevel. So I'm going to turn off uh, the other ones here. Uh, I deleted that point that we had here as well, and we can start here. Now, we're going to go back, draw a center line, and we're going to start here. This one will be 1775, uh, let's say sub main, sub one main, like this. The slope here will be 2%, so we want everything to basically to basically converge to this point here. And, you know, during the uh, other mine design, we can, you know, install a sump here that will uh, extract all the water from the mine. So we're gonna click OK and start designing our main drift. So we can do something like this, approximately at half. Of course, all of these are uh, design uh, 
factors that you will uh, do and you, you gain you, you gain more experience as you do them. Now, uh, what we want to do is basically uh, start drawing our uh, crosscuts from here at uh, five meter uh, cross marks. Why? Because if you remember from the cut and fill method, you basic you will basically extract one drift and then skip one and then go to another one. And then when all of your cross cuts are extracted, you're going to backfill them and then extract the levels in between, right? Your cross cuts in between the backfilled ones. So this is why we're going to use this command here, markers. We're going to select this drift. The marker length is five at fixed spacing of five as well and hit OK. Now, what we're going to do is say that we start here. We're going to skip one and go to the other one, skip one, go to the other one. And this will allow us to extract the drifts and leave space in between so that we can backfill the uh, blasted drifts and then extract the ones in between again. Right. So uh, again, draw center line. We're going to start here, for example. Now this one can we can call it sub one crosscut one seventeen. So it'll automatically extract your elevation at that point because as you remember we started here at zero and we're going at a two percent slope. So this is will be seventeen seventy five point two. So there's a very small difference. And as you go further away from your main uh, along your main drift, this value will increase. Start slope. Uh, and a slope will be two and I'll design my first one to be something like this. And I'll repeat the same process for all the other ones. So this one will be cross cut two. And I'll, you will try and make them as parallel as possible because you need that space in between to be blasted after. And this one will be cross cut three. This one four. And after completing uh, the whole design here for your center lines, you're going to have something like this. I did it also for the uh, West region. And to correctly identify the naming convention between both, what I did is that I named, I added an east at the end here for my east drifts, and then west, a w here, west for my west uh, drifts. And if I rotate the drawing, I can clearly see the 2% slope on my, in every drift here. So this is what it looks like. And so now what we're going to do is essentially model our drifts here. But before doing that, we can insert annotations to correctly identify the elevations here. To do that, very easy, you just click on elevation here and you can say click one, for example. Uh, the width drift is, uh, well, here we can put it to zero. Oh, it has to be a little bit bigger, so maybe one, uh, just so that we can see what it looks like here, you know, something like that. So this will very quickly give you the elevation for any point along the drift. And as we can see, we have a little increase here because of our 2% slope. We can do the same thing for our uh, slope here. We, we click slope on uh, and, you, and then click one or all, hit OK. And then if you click on any center line, choose the direction, it'll give you, it'll tell you where the slope is and how, which d direction is it going. So it's going this direction 2%. And there we go. You have other types of annotations as well. Uh, feel free to try them out and see how you like it. Now to finish the design here, we're going to draw, we're going to model actually our 3D drifts by clicking this command here, construct 3D model. We're going to select all our drifts. So if you select everything, it's going to filter uh, to select only your drifts, hit enter. And what we're going to do is make sure that our drift height is five, as we saw before, that we have a vertical distance of five. And this is why our next sublevel will be above this by five meters. 
Our drift width is also five, right? Because our markers here are five in, uh, in distance in between. And our chamfers, we'll keep them at 0.5. The layer here, we're gonna keep that on sub one and hit okay. And as you can see, our drifts will be created according to the uh, specifications that we indicated in our options here when creating our 3D model. And there we go. So as we can see now, this is what it looks like. If we turn on our ore body, we can see, clearly see here what our drifts look like. We can even put this in X-ray to see the drifts in inside. And this is what it looks like. One more interesting feature that you can use here is to uh, annotate the length of each center line and its cost in a table. To do that, again, from the drift design module, click on this list, click length, select everything, and it's gonna automatically filter by center line. And this will insert a table that tells you the drift name, the, its 2D distance, its 3D distance, as well as the cost. And as we can see, because we correctly named each one of our drifts, we can correctly identify each one of them here. And this concludes our tip of the month. Thank you for watching.